Um, thank you for coming over. This is the my last uh, press briefing as council president, so just really wanted to kind of wrap everything up and just uh, kind of do an overview of everything that we have um, accomplished recently uh, and hopefully just a little bit of uh, what to expect going forward. Uh, welcome my colleague, Vice President Katz, who is here, who's going to take the helm pretty soon and continue on with the work. Um, so first of all, um, just want to reiterate uh, how important uh, it has been for this council to work together the entire year in a very deliberate fashion to pass racial equity and social justice legislation. Um, I've already heard from uh, you know, a couple of uh, other jurisdictions who have been tracking what we're doing and would really like to replicate this. Uh, and so um, I think that definitely this is poised to be a model uh, that other jurisdictions would want to emulate and uh, very, very uh, happy that um, it was unanimous and that everybody worked together in such an amazing way. Uh, one of the things that maybe a lot of people don't know is that this work really started with a really amazing uh, workshop in January where 42 of the county, uh, you know, top leadership in the county came together to talk about and learn, I think, in many cases, the history, root causes of um, the racial uh, inequities and uh, social justice issues. Uh, and then about three weeks ago, I think, um, we gathered again uh, for another two-day workshop looking at the history and also the um, background of uh, racial equity and social justice issues in Latin America uh, in uh, really in, in, um, from a, a lens that recognizes that this is a county that really is the micro, a microcosm of the nation and the world, and uh, we do need to understand uh, that this is not a homogeneous uh, issue, but it's something that it's important to know where we've been and where we want to go. So that was, to me, one of the highlights of this process, and um, really excited about where we're going with this um, extraordinary work. As I said in, in my remarks when we adopted, uh, we're about to pass the legislation. This is an instrument. It's an instrument for us to have the opportunity to uh, look at data and make decisions based on data uh, and uh, really be able to set some metrics and some parameters and be able to hold ourselves accountable. So uh, it will, uh, you know, it's a start, um, but I, I think that it should be something that we can look back and really be proud of that work. Um, also, there's been a lot of conversations about our Council of Gover Government housing goals. Um, this was, uh, we did adopt a resolution where we affirmed uh, that Montgomery County will work to sh and, and will strive to meet those goals. Uh, and we understand that uh, housing affordability is, continues to be a challenge for us in Montgomery County. Um, Council of Governments have, you know, got together uh, with a group of experts and for an entire year worked on updating those targets. Um, I was fortunate to participate in the housing work group for the Council of Governments, since I am a member of the board along with Councilmember Hucker, but I was one of the people that participated in that work group. Uh, and uh, for Montgomery County, uh, we know that those targets um, have been updated, and uh, now our target is 41,000 units by 2030. Uh, and uh, 75 of those we will strive to locate in activity centers, and 75 of those should be affordable. Uh, and so um, this has been, I think, a really important regional um, collaboration. I happened to uh, uh, visit with uh, Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks last week, and we spoke about um, you know, how this continues to be a challenge uh, for us as a region, and we also vowed to work together to do everything possible because, you know, when when, uh, for example, Northern Virginia lands Amazon, we know that the region benefits from that. Uh, so anytime uh, we're able to work collaboratively and land very important economic development um, assets, we know that the region benefits, right? We'd rather them come here than to go anywhere else in the country. So uh, the issue of housing affordability is one that will help us in Montgomery County be competitive. Uh, just as it is with issues of the talent pipeline, uh, just how it is with issues of transportation and with strategies for uh, attraction, retention and expansion of uh, businesses, all of those elements that we affirmed in the economic development platform is what will position us to also um, 
be in the uh, you know be in the competition that we need to be and also be able to to land where we need to land. So, um, so I'm very excited about that. I think that um, we are not starting from scratch. We have a lot of particular tools that we've been working on for many years. And uh, we will quickly start working on identifying the opportunities, the barriers, to see where we can go. And that's something that committees will start working on in um, January. And hopefully we'll bring the action plans to us in February. But the housing piece, I think it's one where we have a lot of opportunities. So um, excited about that. Uh, also tomorrow, um, we will introduce uh, Bill 36-19. Contracts and procurement. This will be for Office of Grants Management established. This is a, an issue that we've been working on since the previous council. And uh, it is to really formalize and uh, reorganize the way that we um, manage our grants program. Uh, and so very excited about that. It's a little wonky, but I think it'll be really great for nonprofit organizations that have been trying for a long time to decipher how it is that we have two separate grants programs and uh, exactly, you know, how do you plan, and it's a former um, co-founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization, I know how important it is to be able to have some continuity and to be able to uh, understand and predict how you're going to manage your own budgets. So we're starting that. Um, we're going to introduce it. It's been hard work of the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee, the HHS Committee, uh, and folks in the administ administration. So we're excited about that. Um, the Crown Act, uh, it's been getting a lot of press as well uh, nationally, um, and this is a um, bill that um, we also passed, which basically prohibits discrimination based on natural hairstyles, including braids, locks, afros, curls, and twists. Uh, and um, it's something that has received a lot of attention, I think, nationally, and we are leading the way. The uh, state of California has been working hard on this issue. and. Uh, here we are as a county doing it as well. So this has been, I think, very positive. Uh, also, uh, we're still working um, in, uh, uh, on the community policing bill. Uh, this is um, another way for us to affirm that Montgomery County will be a county where the police department will always abide by community policing principles. Um, and we know that this is, especially in our county, such a diverse county, such a large county, um, that this is something that we need to really, truly um, address. And I think it's time to put it into law as a guiding principle so that, um, you know, we don't just leave it up to chance with whoever it is and that, that is the, the, the police chief, that um, instead that this is something that we all uh, have in law. Uh, and speaking of police chiefs, of course, we're very thrilled that we have now Chief Marcus Jones uh, heading our police uh, department. Uh, and I think it was a really wonderful outcome on a very long process uh, that as council president, I know I spent a lot of weekends trying to decipher, um, but really happy with this outcome. Uh, and uh, I think that, you know, along with this community policing bill, which Chief Jones as well as the FOP have given feedback um, into the bill, I think that that will also be a really wonderful instrument. Um, so, you know, since this is a wrap up uh, of, of kind of like the year, you know, there'll be opportunities, I think the first week in December to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the year. It's been an amazing year. Um, it's been a unique year, of course, because of all the transitions of a new administration after 12 years, uh, as well as a pretty much new council. Uh, and so all of that has uh, really truly been unique much more than I expected, <laughs> but, uh, but really it's been a wonderful challenge. And um, I can say with pride that we work together uh, very collaboratively and in a very positive uh, climate uh, to achieve things like retaining our AAA bond rating, um, to uh, really uh, work on this operating budget in a seamless fashion uh, where we prioritize, as we always do, education funding, that was super important. Uh, also making sure that um, we provided, uh, you know, races to our uh, unions uh, while understanding that uh, we needed to be mindful of our fiscal um, situation. Uh, I can say that, you know, we have appointed a very large number of <laughs> department heads, uh, and we've also uh, appointed very uh, critical um, 
folks to our boards and commissions as well. So that, that's kept up super, super busy. Um, but i um, also really proud of our early care and education uh, initiative. It is a plan, a four-year plan that I authored, uh, taking into consideration years and years of conversations and sessions and research, um, and that was adopted. And we did put a down payment of $7 million, which the goal is to match that as we go through to get to that issue of scalability. Uh, so that was a very important um, initiative for me personally as to, after working on this for so many years. Um, obviously our racial equity and social justice, our economic development platform, all of these changes like uh, the grants office, all of these are structural changes. Uh, which, in my opinion, it's important that at a time when we're in transition, that we at the same time take advantage of that opportunity to put in place um, structural uh, frameworks. Uh, it's a moment to pause and reflect and then look and see where we can improve. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I think I see here that we did make over 20 appointments. So that's extraordinary. And some of them were first. So Partap Verma is the first planning board member who's Asian, Indian, American, and openly gay. Megan Lamarzi is the first female inspector general of the county. Angela Talley is the first African-American female to be director of the Department of Corrections. And I believe that um, Selena Singleton may be the first African-American clerk of the council. So we made a lot of firsts this, you know, this year, which was really exciting. Um, and then I also am proud of what we did to work with our community. We convened two youth town halls this year. I felt that it was important to go to the community. And uh, we had one in Clarksburg and one in Wheaton with amazing, amazing turnout. Um, we also conducted the Veers Mill Master Plan hearing in the community. So we went to the Holiday Park Senior Center and provided translation. And I think this is something that we need to continue to do. Um, our racial equity and social justice forums, we had over a thousand people that participated in those forums. 60% of those folks were people of color, which was really cool. Um, and also there were many, many organizations who conducted their own um, conversations, so that was really exciting. And not to mention a lot of public hearings, which we have had many of them. Um, so that's that's been super exciting. Um, we just had our Thanksgiving parade as well, and it didn't rain. It was great. It was a little cold, but it was great. Uh, and so um, off we are, uh, hopefully, to celebrate with our families, uh, with our families and our friends, uh, and give thanks for what I believe to be, at least personally, a really productive year here um, in our Montgomery County Council. Um, I will close with saying that it's been for me an honor uh, to look back at a year with so much change and uh, see the body of work and how productive we have been. And we have, would not have been able to do this without the extraordinary work of our analysts, of our communication team, you know, our people that keep the building clean, everybody um, who has had to pitch in in some way to, um, to help us through, and of course our personal staff in our offices. So it's been really awesome. So with that, I'll entertain any questions, if there are any. Questions? Okay. Great. Great, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.